This is Joseph Shulam. We are continuing to study our study of the parables in the New Testament. This time I'm not going to talk about a parable of, of Yeshua, but I'm going to talk about one of the more pivotal parables in uh, the New Testament, and that is the parable that the Apostle Paul gives about the olive trees, the two olive trees. This parable is, is pivotal because it deals with issues that are not so well understood uh, by the traditional Christian churches. And they are pivotal because they deal with the salvation history, and not only salvation history from Yeshua forward, but deals with the history of the Jewish people and, and the history of Israel and the very purpose of the election of Israel as the chosen people of God. Paul starts this parable in chapter 11 of the book of Romans, but it'd be worthwhile for us to talk about uh, Romans 9, 10, and 11 as a unit in Paul's theology. When Paul starts to talk about Israel and the relationship of the gospel with Israel, he starts with a very, very uh, strong statement about his relationship with the Jewish people. He says that he's willing to be an anathema, a curse, to be cut off from Christ, from the Messiah, for the sake of his kinsmen, according to the flesh, for the sake of the Jewish people. In other words, if I translate that to the normal vernacular, I would say Paul is willing to go to hell for the sake of the Jewish people. He's willing to give up his relationship to, to the Messiah, for the sake of his relatives, for his nationality, for the sake of Israel. It's a very strong statement, which shows that Paul's love for the Jewish people has not diminished at all. On the contrary, it has increased since he met Yeshua on the Damascus Road. And he reveals here in this chapter something that is very, very important. And that is that his preaching the gospel to the Gentiles, the inclusion of the Gentiles into the plan of God's salvation of humanity is for one purpose, and that is to provoke the Jews to jealousy so that the Jews too can get saved. In other words, the Gentiles enter into the kingdom of God, into the, the body of the saved, in the community of God's children, in order to provoke the Jewish people, the people of Israel, to straighten up their relationship with the Almighty God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and be saved. But before I enter into the parable itself, I want to say that the idea that all Israel shall be saved, that Paul brings over here in Romans 11, verses 25 and 26, is not a new idea invented by Paul. This idea is one that is repeated in the prophets uh, more than one time. In fact, many times, also in the law of Moses and also in the prophets themselves. We see this idea repeated, for example, in uh, Isaiah 45, verse 17, in which Paul says, Israel shall be saved by the Lord and everlasting salvation. Everlasting salvation, for those of you that, that need a little bit better English, it means forever, without end. Israel will be saved and everlasting salvation by God. That's what Isaiah 45 verse 17 says. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 6 uh, says the same thing, that in the days of the Messiah, the, the branch of David, as uh, the text says, uh, Israel will be saved, Judah will be saved, and the Messiah himself will be called Jehovah, or the Lord, our righteousness. In Jeremiah 31, the famous chapter that talks about the new covenant, verse 35 and 36 and 37 talk about the sun and the moon and the stars being heavenly signs that speak of God's faithfulness, not to reject his people Israel. And verse 37 clearly states that God is going to save Israel. I could go on with these references and these texts very easily and continue, but that, I think, is enough to demonstrate 
that God's intention has always been for all Israel to be saved. Now, one of the interesting uh, statements in the prophet Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15 is talking about God tattooing the walls of Jerusalem on his hand and saying even if a woman forgets, neglects her own baby, her own child, I am not going to neglect or forget Israel because I have tattooed the walls of Jerusalem on my hand. This is a very, very uh, interesting statement. In Hebrew it goes, Hatishkach isha ula merachem ben bit nagam ele tishkachna v'anochi lo eshkachech chakoti chomotaych al kapai. It's a very, very emotional statement made by the prophet Isaiah in the name and from the mouth of God. So for those who, who have kind of a supersessionist idea that God has replaced Israel with the church, you better reread your Bible a little bit better because God has not rejected Israel. If he has rejected Israel, there are more than 20 prophecies that say that he's not going to reject Israel. So did God not tell the truth? God tell the truth. And Paul in Romans 11 repeats this truth in several different ways. Now, I want to enter into the parable itself before we uh, enter into the second session of this uh, teaching. And the parable itself talks about two olive trees. Let me read you the parable from Romans chapter 11 from verse 13 on. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke jealousy to them which are my flesh and might have saved some of them, if casting away of them be the reconciliation of the world, what shall be receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy, the lump also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches have been broken off, and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them partakes of the root and the fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches, but if you boast, you bear not the root, but the root bears you. Let me stop here a minute with this idea. There are two olive trees, and one of them is wild, and one of them is original, is not wild. And these two olive trees are portrayed here as Israel and the Gentiles, and the Gentiles are grafted in to the original olive tree. This itself should be a good place to stop and to go into the second session. So please follow the second session on YouTube and continue the teaching. May God bless all of you.